This is a follow-on to the tutorial earlier in the week on drawing houses. So this time I'm going to do a quick tutorial just showing a slightly more automated way to lay in houses if you have, say, a bigger city. So if you have a city, you don't want to draw in every single house. Also, in cities and more developed dwellings, you're likely to have terraced buildings. You're going to have city blocks rather than individual buildings. Um, and so drawing those can take an awful lot of time. Uh, you can do them all by hand. Uh, I certainly have done in the past. Um, but this is a means of showing you some other options of how you can draw in cities quickly. And this is using some of the amazing brush dynamics that come in Photoshop. So what you can see here, I've got a brush that looks like it's rectangular, but if I just click and then shift click to lay in a line, you're going to see that it lays a kind of a jagged range of blocks rather than um, a line of squares. Um, and by using this, you can actually get the impression of a collection of jumbled buildings or indeed a fairly... Uh, tight city block uh, without much difficulty or trouble at all. So you can see if I actually wanted to draw these shapes in myself it would take me a very long time um, but by laying in block like this you can actually get a bit of a sense of kind of a, a jumbled city metropolis um, quite quickly. Uh, okay so uh, what I'll do is in a little bit I'll show you what the brush settings are for this. Um, but that should give you a quick sense of, you know, just some buildings. And then for some other areas, you want to just dial the size up. Now, because this is a set of dynamic brush settings, dialing the size up just changes the size of the blocks. It shouldn't actually change the feel or the sense of the brush too much. So you'll get a different size of building, but it should still all feel consistent. Now, you'll see that I'm drawing over the edge of the lines here quite a lot. Um, and the roads are disappearing beneath our burgeoning metropolis. Um, but that is not a problem, and I will show you why in just a second. Okay, so this gives you a nice kind of laid-in set of buildings to be working with. That should do just nicely for the time being. Um, so what I'm going to do now is just show you how this brush has been set up if we zoom out. That gives you a sense, okay, so that's kind of the print scale. And this gives you more of a sense of the impression of buildings, the impression of a built-up area, rather than kind of the detail uh, of individual buildings. So obviously, if you look at this scale, it's obviously not a planned out set of city blocks. But when you zoom out, you can easily get the concept that this is a fairly planned out set of city blocks. Um, right. And to show you how the brush is set up, we need to go to the brush settings. So here the brush settings are. Uh, right, so the brush tip is a, a standard square brush. In this case, a 60 pixel square brush. I've squeezed it sideways uh, and set it to, to be thinner than it is tall. Um, and uh, I set the spacing to about 50%. Now you can just extend the spacing and you'll get a collection of different brushes in here where you can really chunk it right down to get contiguous buildings. So if we have, use our 14% spacing, and then we resize the brush down a bit, this is when you get like proper contiguous uh, terraced buildings. Yeah, so this is if you're looking at like a really modern city, some kind of mega city, and you're looking at the, the contiguous city blocks, and then you put in the break so you can get into the center, and so that gives you a very different feel without actually having to do too much work in developing a new brush. You see, so that's quite a different type of city block that we get from that. So by editing the spacing, you can get that kind of difference. So let's just put that back to about 50%. Okay, now the other two things which actually give us the, the dynamism of this brush are the shape dynamics and the scattering. So we turn both of those back off again, you get just a fairly standard, very standard, square brush. If we put the shape dynamics on, well, let's do the scattering first. If we put the scattering on, and you can see here I put the scattering 100%, so that means it can uh, scatter by up to 100% up or down off the axis that it's being drawn in. Um, and I've also increased the count jitter. So what the count jitter does, it means you can actually end up laying individual brushes 
over on top of each other. Um, so if I do, let's see if I do this. Yeah, so here's where the count comes in. You can see here that there's a big space between the brush here. And in this case, there's no space at all. In fact, the two brush strokes are right on top of each other. That's what's coming from the count. A high count means you end up getting brushes on top of each other. A low count means you get even spacing. If you jitter the count, as we're doing here, we've added the, uh, the count jitter up to 100%, then that's what causes the duplication and the change in the spacing. So you can see that as I go from 0 to 100%, you can see the jitter uh, changing the count. Uh, okay, so that's what the scattering does. The, di the shape dynamics means that it has a couple of things in here. So we've got a size jitter of 10%. That just means that our building's going to change their size. We're not going to get a uniform size of building. Uh, if you want to have more uniform buildings, then you bring that right down. Um, uh, I set that control to pen pressure as well. So you can actually vary the size of your buildings. And uh, There's a minimum diameter, which means it can't go below a certain size. Uh, and then I've set the direction to uh, control the angle of the buildings. This means that if I follow the curve of a road, this, the buildings will follow it too. So that means that the buildings will always be perpendicular to whatever line they're following. So, for example, if I turn that off, you'll see that they no longer follow the curve of the example line. If I turn it back on again, then it suddenly follows the direction of the line again. Uh, and then I'm also going to set a 100% roundness jitter. So that just means that this changes effectively. If it were a circle, it would change how ovoid it is. Because it's not a circle, it's a square, it changes how much it's deformed from a true square. So that effectively changes this parameter here. So with those in place, so there's the shape dynamics, there's the scattering dynamics, we have this quite dynamic building brush. Uh, and then we can just, as we were doing before, fill in whole sets of buildings. When we want to have more buildings, we can, or we want it to be a, a more unbroken string, then we can go over it more than once. Uh, yeah, and so you just lay in some nice kind of structure. Okay, so we now have a load of buildings laid in, but as we saw before, uh, they've gone over some of the edges, they've gone over some of the roads, and that's not quite what we're after. Um, so we're going to end up just cleaning up these edges a little bit. Now to do this, uh, we're going to select the roads layer. So take the roads, select the pixels, so you can see all the roads are selected there. I'm going to change that into a path. I've actually done that already so you can see this here, but let's just pretend that we don't already have a roads layer. So here's roads 2. Um, and then we're going to go back and so this is our new hairstyle. And here is our pristine white uh, mask. So what we could do is we could just go back and take some kind of big round brush, something like this, and we could just press enter to stroke our roads. And that gives us very quickly a nice straightforward clean mask, which means that the buildings don't flow into the road. So we don't end up having any of those buildings kind of going over the edge and flowing into it. So you can see that kind of works. Um, but you know, it has some issues. If you look at this down here, so you see where we've got this kind of curved road because we're using a curved brush we've got this kind of curved edge to our houses, which really doesn't look very good. Um, and that's kind of a consistent problem anytime you try and do this kind of thing. So instead of that, what we're going to do is we're basically gonna use the same trick as before. So I'm going to so option click that, um, and I'm going to just fill that with white again, because we're not gonna use that. But we're gonna use the same trick as before. So we're gonna use another dynamic brush so I'm going to go back to kind of one of the brushes we had before. It's a big square brush. This looks very familiar. But this time I'm going to turn it around the other way because I want it to be lengthwise. I'm going to make it quite thin. I am going to turn the scattering right down to 10%. And I'm going to reduce the size jitter and turn off any pen pressure. And I'm also going to take the, oh, I'm going to take the roundness jitter 
right down. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to, well, let's just add a little bit of roundness to it there. Um, right, so you can see that we've got this nice rectangular brush. It is contiguous, there's no spaces between it. Um, and there's a little bit of variation in how far it goes away from the center line. Okay, you might be able to see where this is going. So if we now stroke our layer with this, we get quite a nice chunky straight line edge around our roads. Um, and particularly, you'll see there are now no curved edges. There's a few spiky edges, so you can see some spiky edges like here and here, but that's going to work out okay. So if we now go back to this, we have straight edge lines for all of our houses. Okay, So especially when you look at things like these city blocks, you're now getting a nice clean edge um, from, the, uh, from the mask. Uh, and then internally, you're getting all these nice little uh, alcoves and streets and things which come from the brush we were using there. So just to show you what the difference is with and without um, that mask, we can just disable the mask. You can see kind of the fuzzy outside messy edge line. And we can enable it, and we have this much cleaner edge, which kind of helps to define these city blocks. Now, if we zoom out again, you can see how this is starting to really define the buildings inside our city blocks. Um, and if I was doing this properly for a full map, I would go through this with a lot more care. I'd keep every couple of blocks, I would vary the exact dynamics of my building brush so that you would get kind of an organic variation in the form of the city as you continue going through. Uh, but that's